It's election day. And what do you suppose a politically oriented talk show is going to discuss on election day? Yeah, elections. Also, voter suppression. Also, the fantastic, amazing 20,000 people attending Obama rally last night here in Des Moines. We'll also talk a little bit about Hurricane Sandy. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ed Fallon here, folks. Gateway Marketing Cafe is your locally owned source for specialty groceries. Enjoy chef-crafted prepared foods, artisan baked goods, organic produce, specialty cheeses, and hand-selected wines and craft beer. Visit the lively cafe for breakfast, lunch, or dinner seven days a week. Gateway Market is centrally located on the corner of Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway and Woodland Ave. Stop by or visit www.gatewaymarket.com for more details. That's Gateway Market, folks. Good food, great community. Times are tough, and most people are just trying to make their cars last a little bit longer. That's why you should know about Sargent's Garage in Des Moines. You can trust Sargent's to make the right diagnosis and give you a fair price. Whether it's a routine oil change or a major repair, Sargent's always does outstanding work. So don't give up on that old car just yet. Call Sargent's Garage at 246-8149. That's 246-8149 for Sargent's Garage. This moment of silence brought to you by Tally's Restaurant, Bar, and Catering, home of Des Moines' premier rooftop dining experience. Located in the heart of Beaverdale, Tally's offers speedy and affordable rooftop lunch, catering for events both large and small, innovative cuisine, as well as vegetarian and gluten-free menus. Come to Tally's for live music, dry-aged steaks, Sunday brunch, and all-you-can-eat ribs every Monday night. Tally's Restaurant, Bar, and Catering at 2712 Beaver Avenue. Call 279-2067. That's 279-2067. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Coverage here on the uh, Fallon Forum. That's a uh, that's uh, Brother Truckers downtown kicking us off. Wanna, I want to thank uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility and the Iowa Chapter of the Sierra Club, and also uh, Gateway Market for sponsoring this segment of our program. I want to talk a bit about the uh, Obama rally last night in detail. That was quite an event, but I want to kick us off with um, a somber moment about the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. And again, for many of us not in the, you know, destroyed area of the country, uh, we, you know, it's, it's easier to forget about this. But um, I'm glad to see that there is some attention in the media, despite the, uh, the focus on the election. Although I will say it's so, so minuscule compared to the size and scope of the problem that uh, it's, um, I, 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 think, I think folks in New Jersey and New York are, are, are they're not being given their due uh, attention. Um, so here's what I know from just the most recent news that's come out this morning. Uh, the uh, the um, leaders, uh, government leaders, local, state fi officials, and, and federal as well, are um, finding it's extremely difficult to find uh, housing for the uh, 10,000 people who have yet to be placed. And uh, you see photos online of people sitting in front of fires. Um, I mean, this is. This is Staten Island, New York City, one of the five boroughs in New York City, uh, places in, in, uh, in New Jersey. Um, it's just astounding to see what has happened. Uh, they've already doled out, FEMA has already doled out 200 million bucks in uh, emergency housing assistance. And that has been able to uh, land 34,000 people, mostly in uh, the New York, and, uh, New York metropolitan area, New York City and New Jersey and, and Long Island as well. Uh, it's it allowed them to be in hotels and in motels. Um, and still, we've got tens of thousands of more people who, who don't have a place to go. I, it just, um, it's astounding to me. And again, I'm not faulting officials. I think they're probably doing what they can. I don't think somebody is trying to avoid their responsibility. I think people genuinely care. 
Um, but it's a complicated problem. It's a, it's a, it's a massive problem. They, this is a very, very densely populated area. Obviously, you know that. Uh, and because of that, and because of all the complexities, local and state officials have yet to lay out how they plan to address the, uh, the, the housing situation and related issues. And some of the problems, I mean, one, one problem cited was that uh, the, the issue of um, can they even find enough vacant apartments? Uh, can they set up FEMA, you know, camps? And, and you, you know, you, in some areas of the country, you have plenty of land where you can do that. That's, that's an issue in this area. There's not a lot of vacant land to set up a FEMA-like, tra a FEMA trailer camp. Um, you know, and, and then you can't always, again, a lot of people live in apartments, so you can't just plop one of these trailers, these FEMA trailers, in, in their garage, their, their driveway, rather. Uh, so it's, it's, there's a lot of complexities to it that were not relevant uh, in, the, uh, in the Hurricane Katrina situation. Um, so, uh, you know, where is this going to go? Well, um, you know, right now, you know, a week after the storm, 1.4 million people, uh, homes, I should say, and businesses remain in the dark, though that's more than 1.4 million people. How many people per home um, or apartment? I mean, we, we have 1.4 million residences and businesses that are still in the dark and without power. Now, this was just news to me this morning. I will wait and see how this shapes up. But another storm, a nor'easter packing heavy rain and gusts of 50 to 60 mile per hour wind is also headed for the metropolitan area, for the New York City metro area, Wednesday. And that could threaten more flooding and power outages and could even undo some of the repair work that has already been done. So I, 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 hope, uh, I hope people are paying attention. I know Iowans have volunteered to go to this area and are trying to help out. I know people from other parts of the country are doing the same. Americans do have the, um, the honorable tradition of rising to the occasion when some part of the country suffers a disaster. Part of the problem may be we are getting disaster weary. There are so many uh, of these kinds of problems. I mean, look at, the, look at the flood in Cedar Rapids, the 2008 flood in Cedar Rapids, a mere a little over four years ago. We're still pulling out from that disaster. That, that disaster is still having effects on people's lives. There are still areas that have yet to be addressed. Um, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know how, how many more disasters we as a nation or civilization on this planet can can absorb before we become numb to the reality of of extreme weather and 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 also not just not just numb psychologically but 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 fiscally spent you know not able to to provide the resources needed to uh, to address the um, the aftermath of a disaster so um you know and for years and I've often phrased this rather in a, in a, in a kind of a, uh, a, a bantering manner, but I've for years predicted that there would be a, an inevitable mass exodus from the East Coast. Um, and, you know, I've often thought, well, maybe that would happen suddenly if there was just a, a huge um, inundation of Manhattan, for example. And the way I'd banter about it was I would joke about the, um, the, the, the importance of addressing climate change to prevent all those Yankee fans from moving to Iowa. But um, the truth is there are places all up and down the East Coast, along the Gulf Coast, where, and, and in New Orleans, case in point, where you will, see, um, you will see this kind of problem continuing. I mean, this is a storm that is unprecedented. There's nothing like it in the record books, nothing. And, um, and the, the complexities of the problems that it has caused are unprecedented. Uh, you know, and, and I'm... Sure, those of us who've been saying climate change, climate change, want to continue to say, hey, um, told you so. But, you know, there's, there's really no, that doesn't help at all at this point. I know that. What, what helps is to, is to come up with a plan now for mitigating, for, for minimizing the damage. You know, um, I know this talk about a seawall around Manhattan. I, I don't, or I, I just don't see how you can provide enough levy support to <laughs> keep Manhattan from being inundated. If not, you know, by this kind of storm, by something even more serious, as sea levels rise, as storms continue to get worse and worse. So, um, and I, again, it has, it's been very distressing to me not to see climate change discussed in this campaign. Uh, that said, uh, you have Mitt Romney, who basically says um, it doesn't exist, it's not a problem. I wonder if he's saying that now after this horrible disaster on the East Coast. You have Obama, who 
has not done anything near what's needed, but has at least um, done some things. He certainly approves the approves of the wind energy tax credits, and that's a small step, one that's important here in Iowa, but a small step. Uh, he has done his part for improving gas mileage. Um, again, little things like that. He he's done you know done some things for solar energy as well. Uh, then he's also gone the wrong direction on some issues as well. Keystone pipeline, oil drilling off the coast. Um, you got it. But I just I I'm, I just uh, if this is not the um, I, I don't, I mean, I keep saying every time we have one of these disasters, every time we have a storm that is unique in scope and size and impact, I just, I, I keep wondering when are the leaders in this country going to say, hey, um, we have got to take action. And again, action should be on two fronts. It should be on reducing the carbon we are putting into the atmosphere to minimize the, the, uh, the, the uh, worsening of the problem. And it should be, you know, and even more important, I'll say at this point, it's time to plan for disasters and to take steps needed before those disasters hit. I mean, you, can just, you know this stuff is going to happen. And here in Iowa, we know we're going to have more flooding. And we probably should also know that uh, the possibility of, of prolonged drought is an issue as well. So we have to be thinking about storing water, about saving water, reducing water use. We have to be thinking about... Um, how we stockpile food, medicine. I mean, I, I know it sounds like a siege mentality, but folks, this is the reality we are dealing with. And if you don't see that, what's going on in New York right now, I think, you're, um, I think your, hand is, your head is in the sand along with the head of Mitt Romney, most of the Republican Party, and unfortunately, a lot of Democrats as well. Um, plenty more to talk about. I wanted to, uh, before we launch into discussion specifically of Election Day itself, I think this was, um, this was good timing. This was good timing. In the Des Moines Register today, and this is not a Register story, this is an AP story. It is about, um, it is about a, voter, a form of voter suppression. And voter suppression has uh, so many different cloaks it wears. Uh, we're all familiar with the hanging chads in Florida. We're familiar with um, black people being uh, turned away from the polls. We're, we're familiar with... Um, the discouraging long lines, the two-hour waits or more in, in Ohio. Uh, we're familiar with lots of ways in which voter suppression occurs. And again, one thing I want to commend Iowa on, we have the longest voting day of any state in the country. Good for us there, and um, let's keep that going. Now, there was, just so people know, there was an effort to change that back in the 90s when I was in the State House. Uh, it was a Republican-led effort. Again, as I've said before, a lot of the problems we address in this country, uh, neither political party has been able to step up to the plate and do something. The Republicans tend to want to make the problem worse. Democrats tend to be okay with the status quo. Again, there have been some, there have been some pieces of progress that, uh, that you have to uh, you know, commend the Democrats for. But when it comes to voter suppression, that's been a very, very partisan issue. And back in the 90s, you had a situation where um, uh, Republicans controlled... Uh, I can't remember if they had the Senate at that time, but they wanted to cut back the um, hours of voting. They said, why do we need to have the polls open till 9? Who votes between 8 and 9? Well, you know, a lot of folks who are working late shifts, I, I have friends in, who are doing telemarketing, who don't get off till 7 or 8. Uh, they need that last hour. Uh, they may be working two jobs because they have to do a morning shift somewhere, and then they go into work for their you know, eight-hour-a-day te telemarketing job. So, yeah, there's plenty of people who use that time. And, um, and it was an effort to try to, again, suppress the vote, uh, as have been efforts to require photo IDs. I mean, so these things are happening in Iowa. The, only, the one thing we've done here, uh, or I should say the Governor Branstad has done here, that, has, that is clearly voter suppression, that is, that is verifiably a numerically measurable uh, effort to keep people from going to the polls, is the uh, executive order to require felons to go through a phenomenally silly and tedious process to get their voting rights restored. It is, in fact, easier to get your gun back after you've got out of prison than it is to get your voter registration card back. All right, so this, um, this, uh, this AP piece, actually written by uh, Ryan Foley from Iowa City, um, or and, and, um, datelined in Iowa City, um, Talks about how Iowa is one of, I guess I just gave Iowa a big pat on the back for having the longest voting day. Well, we are also one of only four states where felons must apply to have voting rights restored. Um, again, the only way you can justify this 
is you want to keep people from voting. So how many people are prevented from voting because of that? Well, uh, estimates have been as high as 50,000. But, um, but uh, Branstead has restored the citizenship rights, a.k.a. also the voting rights, for fewer than 20 offenders since he took office. Uh, since Jan this is actually since January 2011. So, okay, so he's, uh, he could say, well, I've, I've restored the rights of 20 people. Well, guess what? 13,000 during that period, 13,000 completed prison and parole sentences in that time frame. 13,000. And you've commuted, or you've uh, restored the citizenship and voting rights for 20? Uh, sorry, sorry, Governor, no pat on the back for you there. And again, you know, for, for Republicans who claim not to like government or not to like, you know, complexities and paperwork and bureaucracy, I mean, this is a clear place where you would want to, if you were consistent with your alleged principles, you would want to change the law, okay? There's only a fraction of those who are, okay, let, let me back up. If you want to, you, you're, and it's not just felons, okay? Some aggravated misdemeanors as well. If, and and if, you want, if you want to apply to have your voting rights restored, you've got to pay your fines and rest, restitution. I understand that. That makes sense. Or at least if it's a, 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 you know, a very high amount, you've got to at least have some plan to pay, some commitment to pay. Uh, you've got to also answer 31 detailed questions and request a $15 criminal history check and report your credit, you know, show your, show your credit, um, your, your credit situation. And, um, uh, what, what, I'm missing something here. There's something else I'm missing anyway, but <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's unprecedented in any, I mean, even other states, the other three states that do this, uh, we, we it's worse here. It's just, it's just clearly an effort to try to keep a certain constituency from voting. There, there's no rationale to it. There's no sense to it. I mean, I, I would rather say to a, a felon, look, you've done your time. Uh, you pay society back. You've got to re you, you, you're required to vote. I, I'm, I'm kidding a bit. But I, if you had to choose between making it almost impossible to vote and requiring them to vote, make them vote. I mean, that, that, that at least gives them the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the experience of what it's like to be a full citizen, you know? Instead, you know, you, you create this, um, this roadblock that, again, 13,000 who completed uh, sentences uh, in, in that time frame of 2011 till today, 13,000, only 20 have had their vi voter rights restored. So, um, you know, this is, um, this is uh, clearly an effort to uh, suppress the vote. Now, Brand says legal counsel, uh, Larry Johnson, um, had told uh, one applicant in Ottumwa in a recent letter that he didn't answer all the questions. Okay, so he asked him to submit a credit history or submit a criminal background check. I mean, I mean you just got out of prison. Surely the Department of Corrections has all your criminal background information. <laughs> and that only the first page of the letter from his attorney had come through. Your application is incomplete and has not been processed. So, I mean, what, what Branstead has done here is create a, a massive, uh, he's, he's created some government work for bureaucrats to keep people from being able to get their voting rights restored. You know, and we had a caller yesterday. I was very happy to have somebody call in yesterday. I did not expect that. We were actually on a different subject, but I was glad to take that call. And I thought that was an interesting point. Uh, this person had, um, had applied to have their voting rights restored back when the rule was still in effect under Culver Vilsack. Uh, and then a delay occurred. And now that they've come back to do it under Branstead, it's almost impossible. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I would really love to see Republicans be consistent about this and say, yeah, we're against big government. We want to make uh, government less intrusive in people's lives. Sure, they can go back and have their voting rights restored. But we know that's not the case. We know the case is that they really want to keep people from voting. And again, Matt Schultz, uh, who I think is doing a horrible job as Secretary of State, has made it really clear that he's going to do everything he can to um, toughen up. I mean, toughen up voting laws is another way of saying keep people from doing it. All right, so anyway, I hope if you are able, uh, you will vote today. And if you are not able because you are a felon or fall into this, mis this aggravated misdemeanor category, I hope you will also take the time to, um, to apply for uh, the, the, um, the right to have your voting rights restored, knowing full well that it will cost money and be an unmitigated uh, headache. But again, again, I, I understand why people don't do it. All right, um, I got to take a break here. I do want to talk. Um, I want to share a couple other voting, uh, voting uh, suppression 
comments from people who've written to me today. And then we're going to launch into a conversation about the Obama rally. Big event, amazing event, and the last time you will ever see Michelle and Barack Obama campaigning together for president. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Hey folks, it's Ed Fallon. I want to tell you about saving energy and saving money. Tim Reynolds with Reynolds Energy Solutions will give you a comprehensive energy audit that will cost you nothing. And Tim will identify the many ways in which you can reduce energy use while saving money. Now, I had Tim over for an audit last month, and I was amazed, amazed, I tell you, at how much energy was going through the roof, out the windows, the back door. You get it. So before the cold winds of winter really blow hard, give Tim a call at 802-2801. That's 802 802-20- Host is a locally owned restaurant in downtown Des Moines that focuses its food and philosophy on embracing simplicity. The majority of Host's food is from local farmers who practice sustainable and health conscious agriculture. Much of what you'll find on your plate is a familiar comfort food presented with a modern and tasty interpretation. Host is open for lunch Monday through Friday from 11 to 2 and also available for private dinner events and special themed dinners throughout the month. So check out Host at 13th and Locust in Des Moines. With warm weather finally here, it's time to think about upgrading the efficiency of your furnace and air conditioner. Leonard Tinker Heating and Cooling has provided honest, competent service for over 20 years. Whether it's your home or business, for repair work or to install a more energy-efficient furnace or air conditioner, call Leonard Tinker at 263-0422. That's 263-0422. For honest, competent heating and cooling service, call Leonard Tinker at 263-0422. Wow, some wedding. Yeah, I've never seen a bride in coveralls. Right, and skipping down the aisle to accordion music. Not to mention the reception. That wedding cake was a freaking fruit cake. It's your wedding. Don't leave anything to chance. Diana's Wedding Cakes. Using only the finest, freshest ingredients with free on-time delivery and setup. Choose one of Diana's custom designs or create your own. Call Diana's Wedding Cakes, 641-275-9279. That's 641-275-9279. Well, hi, I'm Rob Spearman. I'm a broker owner of REMAX Real Estate Concepts in Des Moines, Iowa. Give us a call if you're looking at buying or selling a home, or if you're having trouble on your mortgage payments or looking to purchase foreclosures, we have the agents to help you, experienced, outstanding agents. Our office number is 515-276-2872. Or if you'd like to look at homes, go to our website, homeconnectusa.com. There is hope. Visit groundwire.net and chat now with a live coach for answers. Oh my God, Becky, did you see her bumper? I know she's had work done. Just last week, she had dimples and stuff all over, and now look. (laughs) Yeah, dimples and stuff. (sighs) Yeah. I'm Jamie Lasher from Minor Rec Express. We're here to help with all the dents, dings, and drama of car ownership. Call 278-0101 or visit Minorec.com for details. We'll see you in the fast lane. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. That is uh, Mr. Baber's Neighbors and Bluegrass bringing us back. Why don't you get me a little Rocky Top on here sometime? I love that tune. Uh, let's go um, Let's uh, go to a quick uh, gratitude check for uh, Gateway Market. Uh, Gateway is uh, 20th and Woodland in Des Moines and uh, went there yesterday to prepare for today's fruit diet. Yes, maybe you've heard I'm going to be uh, I'm fasting for a week on just broth, uh, fruit juice, and herbal tea. And today is a day where I just eat fruit because uh, it's a good thing to do that when you go into a fast. Um, I'm, I'm fasting because it's, um, it's important personally for me as a cleansing, both spiritually and, uh, and physically cleansing opportunity. 
but also um, days like this when you have um, when you have uh, you know, I, 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 this is a monumental day in our history. Election day always is, but this might be more significant than many. Uh, it's important if you are somebody who guides your life from a set of spiritual values to take the opportunity to reflect, to um, step back, to uh, regroup. And, and that's part of why I'm doing this. The other part is uh, I, I, I'm fully aware that we're not going to solve this country's problems with the current two-party Two, uh, the two parties in control. Again, I've said before, Republicans are, are making the hole deeper. Democrats are barely stemming the tide. Uh, they're kind of just holding the status quo. We need better than that. I'll talk more about that over the next uh, weeks. And uh, basically, this, is a, a, this fast is in part for me an effort to prepare myself for, I think, what will be a very significant uh, undertaking. Uh, working with you and, and many other people to try to do what we can to create that political force that can truly move us forward. I gave the example of the uh, situation in, in, um, in New York, in New Jersey. You know, uh, That's just one example of how we're not going to move forward with the uh, status quo. All right, so um, how did that tie into Gateway? Well, I went to Gateway to get the stuff I needed for today. And uh, I tell you, I, I had a pretty nice breakfast of fruit. I'm going to have a really nice dinner of fruit. And right here is what I'm going to have for lunch. This is my lunch, folks. And this is all from Gateway Market. Kiwis, apples, organic apples, uh, organic grapes from, can't remember, but they are definitely organic, and organic blueberries. Now, doesn't that look good? I mean, I could, I could probably pretty much eat that every day. Well, maybe not. Um, I, mean, I would miss my dairy. But um, I'm looking forward to lunch after the show, folks, um, and hopefully uh, this uh, – this element of the, of the fast will help me uh, prepare for the more challenging stuff coming ahead. But uh, I got all that at Gateway Market. And again, of course, not just fruit. You can get anything you want at Gateway Market, kind of like Alice's Restaurant. And they've also got the cafe for breakfast, lunch, and supper. And they provide catering. So check them out, folks, and thank them for supporting this program. They're 20th and Woodland in downtown Des Moines in the uh, Sherman Hill neighborhood. Okay, so um, on to other issues of voter suppression. Um, okay. The first one is just kind of uh, fun. Um, where are you? Um, my, my, uh, my Facebook page moves around. And, oh, there it is. I, um, <laughs> I mentioned, I posted this morning, election day breakfast, apples, raspberries, dates, and apricots. Now time to go vote. And uh, J. Michael McCoy writes, wait, Ed, didn't you get the memo? Democrats are voting tomorrow. Sit down. Take a load off, brother. Okay, I know that Mac is just kidding. Ha <laughs> ha. But, um... <laughs> you have to wonder uh, if, uh, if he hasn't accidentally stumbled upon a new potential form of voter suppression, telling people inclined to be voting as Democrats that, that the election actually happens on a different day. Anyway, I, I doubt that'll go anywhere. All right, so this is a more serious um, uh, situation here. Um, Diana writes, um, in Iowa, if you have voter, if you see problems with people being prevented from voting, call the voter protection hotline. And I will give you that number. It's 855. That's a toll-free number. 855-VOTE-174. Vote-174. And if you, um, there will be people at that number standing by to help make sure everyone gets to vote. Again, I don't know how that works. Um, I, I'm interested in hearing people who've actually used that. Now, at, um, at Deanna's precinct, she says that they told her to present a photo ID. Now, I've already told you, I've had a couple other stories about this, um, previous to today, where people have uh, been asked to, at a satellite voting location, to present a photo ID. That's not required. Uh, that's not the law. And I'm just shocked that anybody would say that. Deanna, who is not to be uh, pushed with, pushed around, I mean, she will fight for herself. <laughs> she got into a shouting match with these people. I don't know who it was. They had to back down and let her vote. And then she called, oh, she did call the Iowa Voter Protection Hotline and turned them in. And she says, do not hesitate to use that number if they ask you for anything other than your name. Again, you don't even have to have your voter registration card. I brought mine with me today just uh, because it was new and shiny and I wanted to show it off. You don't have to have it. Uh, again, if you haven't registered, if you want to register at the election, at the, at the uh, polls today, you can do that as well. In that case, you need some form of identification, a photo ID, and there's lots of different types that qualify. And you need a piece of mail or some, again, some type of ID or or um, utility bill, whatnot, that shows where you live. Or 
You need somebody who lives in your precinct to verify that you are the right person, that you are who you say you are. That's reasonable. I don't have trouble with that. Um, and most people probably are registered ahead of time. But it happens that, you know, you move and then you forget to change your registration. So, yeah, hopefully you've moved and you've, you've already gotten mail and you've got an ID. So, again, if that's happening, um, it shouldn't be. So, uh, and again, more of those, if anything like that happens, feel free to let me know. I'm, I'm happy to get the word out and challenge those kinds of situations. Okay, so the Obama rally last night, again, folks, it was probably um, one of the most inspiring rallies I've ever been to. And I say that as somebody who, as again, I've said before, is, is very disappointed in President Obama on many levels. Um, but, you know, I, I will say, I, I think he's a very sincere man. I think he is. Um, I think he is trying to do a good job. I think. I think. Uh, you know. I've campaigned for, for higher office. Uh, spent you know most of three years traveling Iowa, um, running for governor. Uh, it's intense. It's very difficult. It's very challenging. It's draining. It's um, it's uh, it's it's overwhelming, and that's one state. <laughs> this guy is running nationwide, and of course he. He's been, he's been campaigning for a long time, if you consider his time in the uh, Illinois legislature and the U.S. Senate and his first term and his second. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's grueling. It is absolutely grueling. And um, I, don't, um, I don't think people fully appreciate just how difficult that is. And that, that applies whether it's, whether it's Mitt Romney, you know, Barack Obama, anyone else. It's, uh, it's always going to be grueling unless you're just a schlep and really not campaigning. But that gets found out pretty quickly, too. But I do think Obama is a sincere man who means well. I think, again, part of his problem, in my experience, is he is, he's um, surrounded himself with people who um, represent the status quo. He got a lot of advice about, about how to make sure that he didn't rock the boat too much. Um, I mean, you know, maybe good political advice, but from people who have the status quo's interest in mind, and they have not um, pushed for the kind of change that we really need. Um, and again, in some cases, he's pushed. Obama has pushed, and he's been prevented by the Republican Congress. But that, doesn't, that, that explanation doesn't, doesn't uh, describe all the problems. Again, Guantanamo is still open. The Keystone Pipeline, you don't need to be supporting that. that. That doesn't involve Congress. You don't need to be signing some of these civil liberties bills that many of us are concerned about. So yeah, there's plenty of reasons to be concerned, but I think the man is sincere. I think, um, you know, I'm, I was 30 feet away from him last night. Um, I can tell a phony when I see one. Uh, and I've never, I've never thought Obama was a phony. I've always thought he was a, he, he intended well. Uh, the only thing that struck me as a little bit phony was when he ran up on the stage with his little hands up here. I mean, that's cute maybe, but it didn't, it didn't seem like he really needed to do that. That's a, that's maybe a, a power jogging or power walking pose. But to ascend three or four stairs to the stage, meh. but again, that's not a big deal. I'm being a little, little funny here. But you know, I, I mean, I saw, I, I saw, I saw Leonard Boswell get up on stage. Yeah, and that, that guy has phony written all over him, and I can. I've told you why. I could tell you more that I haven't even shared with you. I won't, but I will tell you I voted for Frank County. Um, again, Frank, obviously not going to win. You don't win on a write-in vote for Congress, but he would be a good candidate. And hopefully in 2014, if Latham is the, uh, is the incumbent who wins, Frank will consider running because he would be a great congressman, I think. I think so. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, the, the rally itself, uh, again, Obama's speech, powerful. Um, and maybe um, if we can pull together some clips from that, we might be able to share some of that with you later. Um, the funny thing about being, you know, being there as press is um, I wasn't able to really hear the speech that well. I had to go back later and listen to it online because <laughs> the, uh, the sound is all going out. But, but you're there. Uh, I mean, you're in, in the press box behind uh, the stage. You look up two blocks of Locust Street all the way to, I think, East 6, and it's just I mean, there were 20,000 people in Des Moines. I mean, clearly, people feel this is important. That is by far the biggest rally I've ever seen. And the biggest rally I'd seen before was an Obama rally four years ago, and the biggest before that was a pro-immigration rally uh, back in maybe 05. Um, it, was, it was a phenomenal event, and I, I do want to, I want to tell you a little bit about the, um, some of the security issues, uh, the, the sniffer dog, um, and uh, there were two people who I thought were obnoxious. Um, and uh, I do want to take your calls, too, folks. So if you've got some feedback on this or anything relevant to the election, 244-0077, 244-0077, or toll-free 
877. Let's go to uh, Stephen. Stephen Toothman, welcome to the show. Hi, Ed. How are you? I'm good. Good to be back on the show. Um, well, I've got reports from all over the country. What would you like? Uh, <laughs> In Pennsylvania, we have reports of voting machines flipping, uh, flipping Obama votes to uh, Romney votes. What? Uh, yep. That's new to me. There, there are reports coming out now. I haven't gotten all the information on it yet, but they've taken machines out of service. Where, where, uh, where in Pennsylvania? I don't have those details yet. Um, but, it, but, it's, about, but it's been verified that voting machines have been flipping. Uh, Think Progress is, is reporting it as well as a couple of other outlets. Yeah. Are these D-Ball, the, uh, the uh, voting machines owned by the company that uh, is a big supporter of President Bush in previous elections? I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know all those yeah. details yet. As soon as I find them out, I'll, I'll let you know. What else is uh, happening? We've got True the Vote being kicked out in Franklin County for forging uh, voter or the election observer forms. Wait, wait, wait. True, true to Vote. <laughs> this is Franklin County, Iowa? Franklin County, uh, Ohio. Ohio. Well, what happened again? I didn't. I didn't catch that. Uh, True the vote apparently has allegedly has forged the election observer forms that they needed to file to get in to observe the vote. They what? apparently were taken off by both parties in Franklin County and Ohio, and then they tried to pass off forged uh, observer certificates. Okay. Or Bad form. behavior, but how how does that potentially affect um, the outcome of the election? Well, what they were going to do was try and intimidate voters there in Ohio to not come to the polls or, you know, try to uh, make double check all their IDs and things like that to intimidate voters. So it's a victory for people being able to get to the polls. Huh. Okay. Interesting. And and, and that's um, that's that's verifiable. You can know that that's what they were trying to do. That is verifiable. Yes. All right. What else? And we've got Iowa, where we've got several reports, including the 27th precinct here in Des Moines, where voters are being asked to provide uh, photo IDs yes. uh, in violation of state law. I believe that's the same precinct that Deanna Newkirk uh, wrote from, where she that's was. That's right. And yeah. she was... We've also got one in one. We've also got a precinct 161, which I believe is out in West Des Moines. Okay, and their yeah. voters are being told they need to provide ID. That's right. Have, have voters actually been turned away and and? You know, I don't think so. Most of the voters are smart enough to know that they don't have to do that and are standing up for themselves, yeah, and which if, is and, good to hear. And if voters are smart enough to know that, then why would the why would the uh, the precinct workers not know that? I, I, that mystifies me. I mean, it's never it, been the law in Iowa. Why, why would well, they? Well, I mean, you know, we're only hearing reports from people that we know have, have reported and, 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 and gotten to vote. There may be other people out there that have been turned away or, or felt intimidated and left yeah. and didn't vote. And we don't know about those folks yet. It's troubling. I mean, I, and, you know, this election could be very, very close, and it could it very well could not be determined tonight. Oh, very well, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think Ohio will come in until well after midnight. Well, the potential, I mean, the way the, the way I, the way Ohio's voter verification or election verification system is set up, it could be mid-December <laughs> yeah, if it's exactly. close. So I, I hope that's not the case. But So are, are you hearing anything else, Stephen? Um, no, the only thing I've heard about uh, other than that is that the OSCE observers should be here in Iowa this afternoon sometime. They're in Minnesota this morning. And what's that stand for again? That is the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and, and they are doing election observ observing across the country. Right now, that's, the that's the same group that uh, that Secretary of State Matt Schultz uh, wants kicked out of uh, polling places and, and yeah, even and, even arrested. And yeah, and apparently he failed American government, which he doesn't realize that the U.S. treaty obligations uh, pretty much trump state law. So. Well, yeah, and we 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 do that. Our, I mean, we we. We often provide people to help monitor elections in other countries. And exactly. if ours are so good, why should we not at all? We, we should be welcoming people to see what goes on here. Right. And even even uh, the, the, the federal secretary, the, the secretary of state uh, in Washington has said that these folks are to be guaranteed access to the polls. Mm, wow. So we'll see what comes down on that. I'd like to make sure when they get here, I can take some pictures of them being turned away so that we can. Uh, Hopefully that provide. won't happen. Yeah. Uh, now, are you um, are you uh, were you at the Obama rally last night? No, I was not at the Obama rally last night. Okay, well, I've been kind of avoiding politics, that kind of partisan politics, in favor of working on uh, voter suppression and things like that. Well, it's a, it's uh, it's Steve. You you always t you always take on good work and often good work that other people aren't uh, aren't engaged in. I really appreciate it. 
All right, talk to you later, Ed. Thank you, Stephen. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, folks, if you'd like to join the conversation, 244-00-77 or toll-free 855-244-0077. And my email address is fallonforum at gmail.com. I want to thank uh, Tim Reynolds with Reynolds Energy Solutions for, for sponsoring this segment of the uh, program. Uh, you ought to have an energy audit done, folks, because, well, because it helps support this program. But more importantly, it's free and it will identify ways in which you are wasting energy. I can pretty much guarantee you, I've had friends who are the most meticulous, conscientious, plug every gap and leak type people. Tim is still, I mean, he's a very, very thorough. He has great equipment, very thorough, very conscientious. He still found places where they could save, uh, save energy. Again, the audit itself costs nothing. It helps support this program and it also gives you some idea about how you could save money and energy. So give them a call, 802-2801, 802-2801, ask for Tim Reynolds. I'll be back in a minute, folks, on the Fallon Forum. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno one of webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Wait. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on Webcast One Live. We're going to look back on this and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there, too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast One Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com. I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. Hi folks, it's Ed Fallon here. Proof Restaurant at 13th and Locust. You've probably been there for their award-winning nationally recognized lunch specials. Well, now Proof is open Thursdays and Fridays for supper. And here's where the chefs really get creative. Uh, let me tell you, they're like artists, okay? I've been there and it is one of the best meals I have had in Des Moines. I've heard that from other people. You gotta check it out. Proof for supper, Thursdays and Fridays and also the second Saturday of the month. Do not assume you can get in, make reservations. Contact Proof Restaurant online at proofrestaurant.com or 244-0655. That's 244-0655. Hi, folks. Ed Fallon here. When it is time to entertain, think of Gateway Market. Let them handle the details. Gateway offers a wide variety of stress-free options like cut-to-order cheese and charcuterie. There's a delicious olive bar and a wide variety of chef-prepared dips and spreads. Or let the catering team take care of the entire event, right down to the wine and beer pairings. The expert floral designers can even customize the perfect centerpieces. So stop by or visit Gateway Market for more information. Gateway is at Woodland and ML King in downtown Des Moines. Good food, great entertaining. Nestled in the heart of downtown, Ritual Cafe is one of Des Moines' most unique places, offering a wide variety of coffee and tea. Ritual Cafe also serves the only all-vegetarian menu in town. And Ritual Cafe is a cultural hub for artists and musicians, with a performance stage hosting local, national, and international talent. Make Ritual Cafe a part of your daily ritual on 13th Street between Locust and Grand in downtown Des Moines. And check out ritualcafe.com.
I love driving to Newton to see the races. Me too, but I only have to drive across town. You live in Newton? Yep, Newton's got small town charm and it's close to Des Moines. I love the safe, friendly neighborhoods and family-owned businesses. And Newton's wind energy industry is really taking off. How'd you find your home? Dan Kelly with First Choice Realty. And Dan helped me find my office too. Next time, instead of just speeding by, I'll stop in and check out Newton. Why don't you check out Newton? Call Dan Kelly at 641-521-9260 or Kelly at mchsi.com. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to the uh, conversation, folks. I want to thank uh, uh, Fighting Burrito, another great local business. Um, I've uh, known Matthew Goodman, the owner of Fighting Burrito, for a long time, and he's got a uh, wonderful business in Ames. Well, they're now located in Des Moines as well, and uh, right there at the corner of 13th and uh, Locust, possibly the uh, tastiest corner in all of Des Moines. And that's pretty good for Des Moines, Des Moines being the cultural and culinary crossroads of the continent. But uh, Matthew's uh, business, Fighting Burrito, puts together these great American-style burritos. I got the um, I got the Tank Man Burrito yesterday, which is a, uh, a reference to the Guy who stood in front of the tank in Tiananmen Square. I thought that would be a good burrito to have going into Election Day. Anyway, check it out, folks. They're very affordable, very tasty, um, and uh, a great ambiance, too. Right there at 13th and Locust, uh, Fighting Burrito, now in Des Moines. Um, okay, so where to go from here? Uh, folks, if you want to call 244-0077-244-0077. A little more about the, uh, my experience at the rally last night. Now, I'm... Um, uh, it's interesting being on the media side of things. I uh, have I've been for years used to being on the political side of things, but um, as a media person, uh, you you have to go through a whole bunch of hoops. It's not as bad as registering to vote if you're an ex-felon, but you got to go through a bunch of hoops to get the credentials needed to participate in some of these events. Compliments to Bradshaw who pulled that off for us last night, and. Um, it was nice. I mean, we obviously were in a very good spot. We could, you could see the president very well, see the crowd very well. The problem with the spot I had, couldn't hear anything. So you folks who were two blocks away <laughs> to the to the east, you heard you heard it a lot better than I did. Um, again, great view, and I had a chance to kind of you know see this thing from the inside. Um, Secret Service is pretty um, astounding in terms of uh, their efficiency and their paranoia. And uh, there's, a, there's an interesting story. I, I ran into this last night, and then I saw it mentioned in the paper today, so I will read you the uh, quote from the paper regarding Mike uh, Draper and his business, Raygun. Raygun, of course, the purveyor of tremendous, uh, uh, you know, hilarious T-shirts, uh, great, great social commentary. And, um, you know, Draper was told that he would have to close uh, Reagan four hours early. And then he was told he could stay open, but Secret Service would search the business. Now, if you know Mike, you're not, you won't be surprised that he refused both options. So um, he, um, he put up a sign on the, on the business saying, quote, um, Secret Service, quote, uh, or Secret Service, we do not consent to our store being searched. It's not that there's anything illegal in here, but we just employ several Colombian prostitutes and we don't want to tempt you guys. <laughs> Deliciously irreverent. Now, 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 Mike's a Mike's an Obama supporter, but Secret Service were, well, they, they hadn't shown up, but a, an Obama staffer did, and he was he was very unhappy. He thought it was very offensive, but lighten up, have a sense of humor. Okay, so um, given as cold as it was, given as many people as there were, given as um complicated as the management of this, I mean, I, I can't believe all the things they had to do to pull this together. It's just a phenomenal. Uh, piece of work. I talked to a couple of the guys who work the um, the crane that goes up and down behind the press booth so folks can get a better angle shot with their cameras of the crowd. Um, yeah, he'd been working at it since Friday. Um, and uh, I think he was enjoying giving people rides up and down. But it's it's an amazing event. <clears throat> um, I, I, I got to say, I was surprised that I only saw two angry people. Now, there were a group of my, my friends, actually, who were protesting Obama's stand on drones, and I commend you for that. Um, I'm very distressed to see the increased use of drones, um, but that's uh, that's only one issue. And I, I'm I'm I would be willing to bet that under President Romney, the use of drones would get even more common. 
But they, you know, they were fine. The two angry people were some guy with a New York Yankees cap. Uh, I presume he's a New York Yankees fan. And um, this kind of behavior among Yankees fans does not surprise me. He was just, he came running up to the front of a line. I mean, they combined the press people with the folks who were there for uh, the ADA crowd, uh, the folks who had special seating up close because of their disabilities. Uh, that's fine. Um, but for some reason, the um, security had put the press and the ADA folks in the same line. And we were all wondering why that made any sense at all. And they split the line. And this guy came running up. He was just angry that, 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 that we had been given precedence, you know. But, well, the funny thing was, he got in before any of us because they, they split us off so they could search all of our equipment. I mean, I didn't have a camera bag, but um, folks who did, they had this, uh, this amazing sniffer dog, beautiful dog, most beautiful uh, fur and skin and just alert its ears straight up. This dog was, um, this dog was paying attention to life. And uh, it, it was just dying to get in everybody's bags. I don't, know, I don't know how they train a dog to sniff out bombs. Maybe they like coat the bomb with, with steak or something. I don't know. Or tofurkey if it's a vegetarian dog. Uh, I don't know what they do. But anyway, the dog was like just crazy to get into people's bags, um, camera bags, uh, handbags, and just to see what's going on. I, I was just astounded that a dog could do that. Um, but anyway, that slowed us down. So this angry Yankee fan. We were getting just totally out of line. I mean, I, I was almost surprised he was getting so pushy and loud that I was surprised they didn't take him away, remove him from the site. But I think he backed off just in time. Good for him because he did get in before the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, um, I did I, I do want to say, too, I heard somebody in that line. There were people in that line who knew me, and I waved to a couple of them. And then one of them was overheard saying, Ed Fallon, he's not a reporter or he's not a journalist. I can't remember what they said. You know, I'm, I get kind of fed up with this, okay? Um, there's a lot of people who follow what I do. There's a lot of people who follow what Bradshaw does. Um, do you have to have a, an actual radio signal to be a, considered a, a journalist or a newspaper? Do you have to have, I mean, what about the, uh, there were a couple kids from uh, Drake University with the uh, Times Delphic there. Are they legitimate press? I mean, their audience has got to be a lot smaller than mine, but it's more traditional. It's paper. I guess they're press. I mean, I'm fine with them being there. But maybe uh, for some people, press only refers to folks who work for a big corporate paper or TV station or a clear channel or cumulus radio station. I don't know what your definition of press is, but um, the word press itself should probably be jettisoned because it is, it is referring to a bygone error. Let us call it media. And let us include social media. Uh, and this is not social media, this is an online show, but I have a lot of social media I work with. A little bit of Twitter. Bradshaw, he eats and sleeps Twitter. I'm, I'm more of a, a Facebook guy. And I like, uh, I like the fact that email has been able to um, provide a means of communication that you, know, you don't have that access through the mainstream press. So, um, yeah, the point is, if you, are, if you are involved in some kind of journalistic capacity getting the message out about, if it's news, news. If it's your opinion, your opinion. And in this case, my opinion and the forum I provide for other people to share their opinions. So, um, yeah, I get, I get kind of peeved at people to say, well, you're not, you're not press, you're not media. You know, what are you doing there? Now, anyway, lighten up. Expand your horizons. Okay, so um, the only other angry guy we saw was some Tenth Amendment loony at the very, uh, as we were walking away from the event, just out there by himself, just blurting incomprehensibly about something to do with the Tenth Amendment. Okay, he was angry but harmless. So again, amazing given how many people were there, how well-behaved and uh, well-managed everything was. Um, now, um, the, uh, the, uh, the other thing that caught my attention was the, the security on the rooftops. And maybe, maybe those of you who were out in the crowd could see them just as well as I could, but uh, they, were, uh, they were a little scary in a different way. It's sad to think that we need to have that kind of presence, but you know, yeah, you got the president of the United States. They might shoot him. Bruce Springsteen, maybe they'll shoot him. I don't know. But the, um, it could happen. I mean, it could happen. It's happened before. And the technology for killing people has gotten more sophisticated. Um, people are finding ways of doing that that they didn't used to think of. And so um, I understand why it's important to protect the president. Or in the case of uh, another candidate running for president, Mitt Romney, yeah, he should be protected as well. Um, it's just kind of astounding when you see it to think, wow, um, that has to happen in order to keep this guy alive. Uh, these folks were on the roof behind us, and they were, um, 
constantly training their binoculars on the apartment complex on East Grand and East Third and East Fourth and Grand, and they would even shine their light in there, uh, and then they would um, get on the radio. and I don't know. I, I don't know whether they sent people over there to to investigate those apartments. I mean, they were, there were just people in those apartments who lived there looking out at the event, watching the rally. Um, I assume they were pretty harmless. But again, I mean, if somebody really wanted to be, be bad, they'd rent an apartment there and I guess they could do some damage. Um, so yeah, I, it just, it was kind of, I'm not criticizing it. I'm just saying it's a, it's a shame this has to happen. It's a shame that uh, we live in a world where this is the reality. Um, that said, it was remarkable to see how uh, constantly vigil vigilant they were and to what extent they uh, were consistently using binoculars and these, uh, these big spotlights. Um, anyway, you know, the speech itself, um, again, you can, it's all over the internet now. Of course, on C-SPAN has its own uh, complete run of it. Um, it's fascinating to me. I mean, it was really an historic event because this is the last time Barack Obama will be speaking as a candidate. What start, I mean, and he said it, and I think he really, I mean, he actually teared up last night. He got teary-eyed. I think there were plenty of people in the audience who got teary-eyed as well. Um, again, because even if you, like me, disagree with some of his policies or even many of his policies, I have a hard time understanding anybody criticizing his sincerity, uh, his, um, his intent. Uh, yeah, there are the silly people out there who say, oh, Obama, communist, oh, Marxist. Well, I got called a Marxist today, too, by the way. So hey, um, you know, or 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 that he's a, a not a U.S. citizen, or that his passport doesn't exist, or, or some crazy conspiracy crappy stuff. I mean, I get so far tired of that. I mean, the guy really truly is, to the best of my ability to discern, a very sincere person. So um, a great speech. You should go check it out. This is the last time. Uh, again, it's it's really an honor to be in Iowa, to think that we helped start this process. Uh, even though I can. Obama was not my first choice caucus night. Um, you know, Iowa can take credit for launching his candidacy in 2008. Uh, we, um, we, uh, you know, he, 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 unlike some politicians, Obama does not forget his friends. Uh, he's been very good about remembering that Iowans helped put him where he is today. And uh, so it was very appropriate and, and very um, grateful on his part. I mean, it was, it was a nice expression of gratitude that he and Michelle and they brought the boss, should come to Des Moines on the very, very final campaign event that he will ever do as a candidate for president. Um, that's very significant. It was, uh, it was an honor for anybody, I think, to be there at that event. Even if you, again, even if you have trouble with some or many of his policies, uh, just the whole historical context of that visit last night, it was significant. And I, I was, it, was a, it was a delight to be there. Um, so, what, you know, what happens next? Well, uh, I'm going to get out of here and have fruit for lunch. Um, <laughs> if you haven't voted, do. Don't be silly. Just go vote, okay? Even if you want to write in somebody, just do it. Just vote. I mean, I would, I would strongly encourage you not to write in somebody for president. I would strongly encourage you to vote for Barack Obama because um, we are one of those swing states. You know, Iowa's role in this election, you know, in some ways it felt like closure last night, the president, Michelle Obama, coming here. But really, you know, it's very probable that there are other states that will determine how you know, whether this election goes one way or the other, but it could be Iowa. We're one of those nine swing states. And as a result, we've had way more TV advertising than any of us ever wanted to see, except the TV stations themselves. But, um, you know, what will happen tonight? Well, there's, um, there's parties out there. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to go down and check out the, uh, the big event at the um, park by the Scott, by the... Um, uh, what's the, not the sculpture park, by the uh, Papa John Center, the little park there, and uh, there'll be a TV screen showing the results as they come in. Hopefully we'll know tonight what happens. One Iowa will be there. The Des Moines Social Club will be helping to um, put together an event there as well. So it should be quite, quite an evening at 13th and Locust. Again, I think um, that's got to be one of the most happening corners in our very, very happening downtown. Anyway, it's, um, it's, been, it's been a fun election in many ways. Um, can I say fun and election in the same sentence? There have been some fun things that have happened. But fun is just, fun is really not an operative value for me. It's like, okay, whoopee, it's fun. Satisfying is much more important. Um, and I, I guess, you know, there have been certain things about this election that have been satisfying. Again, the proof is in the pudding. The pudding is on the stove. We'll taste it tonight and see how it turns out. Um, 
And, uh, you know, back tomorrow, folks, I'll be talking, um, well, post-election stuff for sure, but also we're going to be talking with Marty Ryan. With I uh, He's receiving an award from Iowans Against the Death Penalty, and that's a significant award. And a conversation about the death penalty could be significant if Republicans control the Iowa House. I, and I was going to make my prediction about that. I, I get too much stuff on the table here. I think Republicans will actually maybe even gain seats in the Iowa House. My prediction is they go from 60 to 61. My prediction in the Senate is that Republicans gain the Senate. I just Looking at the numbers and looking at individual races, how many Democratic uh, candidates are on the table, um, uh, and the amount of money being pumped into those races, we don't see that because we think we're focused on the presidency. But the amount of money going into those races is, is huge. And um, the margin is only 26 to 24. I'm going to predict an Iowa House that remains strongly Republican. I'm going to predict an Iowa Senate that goes Republican. I mean, I'm not happy about that. I don't want to see that. I think you should do your part and go to the polls and try to prevent that from happening if you live in a district that is on the, t on the ballot. But I, I think it's a very real possibility. And so our conversation about the death penalty tomorrow and about a whole bunch of other issues down the road could be more significant because uh, Republican control of the governor's office, House and Senate. Again, maybe I'll be wrong on that. We'll see. I do think the U.S. Senate will re be retained by Democrats. I think Republicans nationally have done enough, enough silly stuff to assure that that chamber will remain Democratic. Again, too early to tell. We'll know hopefully tonight. Um, stay tuned uh, for Bradshaw at 1.30. Bradshaw was also at the rally last night, so I'm sure he's got a lot of information to share from his perspective on that. And again, I want to thank you all for tuning in and encourage you to support all the local businesses that make this show possible. Um, and tomorrow night, a great way to, uh, to uh, celebrate post-election, Go to Proof Restaurant. Proof is a fantastic joint. Uh, joint? Can I say that? It's a, it's a classy joint. Um, and it's, uh, it's right there at 13th and Locust as well. Again, my favorite corner. And um, not only do they do lunch anymore, but they have dinner going on. And they, they're trying to encourage more people to come on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They're doing really well Friday and Saturday. Uh, take the opportunity, especially tomorrow, the day after the election, to go to Proof. Um, tell them you appreciate their support of this program. And uh, enjoy what will probably... Probably be, probably be one of the most fantastic dinners you'll get anywhere in Des Moines. Folks, thanks again. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm just saying. 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 Ching, ching. <laughs>